on, RC enthusiasts? Today is a special day for me. Got my Toyota shirt on. Something just came in the mail. Oh man, the thing I was excited for forever to get. I want you guys to experience this fully with me. We got this ship from Banggood. My package got Banggood. <laughs> so, sorry about my paper towel covers on my address because Banggood needs me to take pictures of those just in case something in here is damaged. That's the way they do their stuff. Let's go ahead and open this sucker right here. Just open it. I guess I'll just open it with a razor since that's what I found. Pretty. This package is heavy, guys. This thing is heavy, so. Probably has really impressive stuff in this kit. Oh, man. That's disappointing to see. Look at that box. I don't know if you can tell the condition of this box right here. I'm so hoping when I open this, it doesn't look ruined in there. But look at that box, man. That's just sad. To say the least. I got stuff stuck on it. Let me take you guys in closer so you guys can unbox this with me. Let's get to that. Well, there you go, guys. That's the unboxing. Here's the instructions. I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see that because they're hard to understand most of the time anyway. I'll go ahead and build this for you guys. Well, there you go. This is it right here put together. Chassis and body. I know you guys seen a lot of YouTube videos already of this, so I don't think I need to show you the body anymore, but let's get to this right here because it's the good stuff. You cannot get this kit. Let's say you got the regular version of this kit and you decide to buy every single upgrade that's on here separately. You are not going to get it for this price. No way. So that in itself is a good deal to me. I like it. Now this 370 size motor right here, it's good for crawling and stuff, but it is too slow for me. So I might figure out a way to put the two speed in here because the mounting patterns on the transmission are the same. So I don't see why it wouldn't fit on there. And I'll probably need to use a shorter drive shaft for that too. But yeah, this is not bad. It's definitely a crawler. It's slow and it can climb stuff. And with the wheel weights installed on all four wheels, let's just say it, it likes to climb. It, it has no problem. It doesn't tip over as much even with this heavy body on it. It's not bad. And you do get a lot of metal parts. You know, I just want to show you all that. That's all metal right there. The, the, the axle itself is metal. This red cover is metal. Everything inside there is metal. You've got these little U-joints over here for your steering, which make, make your steering ridiculous. I mean, look at that steering. But metal seam in the rear, metal drive shafts. Inside this transmission right here, you've got two metal one-to-one -one gears. It's pretty much just a transfer case and the transmission is pretty much inside this reduction box right here. So all this is doing is driving one-to-one -to, -one to the drive shafts. So yeah, it's different. It's not the same at all. It's definitely a step up. Step in the right direction too, I say. I mean. This is definitely not toy grade. I, I don't care what anyone says anymore at this point. Yes, when you buy one of these in kit or RTR form back when they first came out, they were pretty much toy grade. But this, this, this right here is a step above what they've come out with so far. I mean, if this is gonna show us what they're capable of and what they're planning to come out with pretty soon in the future, I can't wait to see it, man. You guys over there, if you guys are watching this video, you guys are great, man. Keep on doing this. Good stuff, man. I love it. The body, great too. You know, I like this stuff. The tires, yes, the tires aren't as soft as the regular kit tires. Yeah, this is definitely softer than these tires. Not by much, but softer. I'd say these new tires that they came out with are in between the RTR or the ready-to-run tires and the kit tires. They're more in between. But if you watch any of my videos, then you've seen me running the ready-to-run tires. I actually don't mind the ready-to-run tires. I even bought more of the ready-to-run tires. These are the harder ready-to-run tires. The soft tires feel like they have more grip and everything, but 
you really have to drive the truck and test the tires, you know, real world, because they're not bad. They grip pretty well. They were on, this truck was on the rocks. I don't know if you can tell, but I've had this truck on the rocks already. Got some dirty tires. And man, it does not want to tip over it. It's, it is a top heavy rig, but it's got so much wheel weights and stuff that it does not want to tip over it. it it'll plant itself. I'm running a 30 amp ESC with a Flysky GT3C transmitter on this one. And with that setup, it crawls pretty smooth. Now I rushed to build this. I was so excited to get it. So yeah, metal links, which you don't get with these ones. There you go. Just so you can see the bottom of this one. That's how it came before. Plastic drive shafts, plastic links. The gears in here, the ring gear is plastic and the pinion gear is brass. The axle housings are plastic. And oh shit, this one's got a 180 with a gearbox, a little 180 motor with a gearbox. And that's not bad. It actually crawls good just as long as you have a good radio system and at least that 30 amp ESC that I've been having really good success with. I love these things still though. Just because I'm a Toyota freak and you know, we got four of these ones. That's one of the differences right there. Oh yeah, let me, let me take a look bit down there again so you can see how much different that looks. And look at that transmission. That's another big thing. Even when I upgraded my C24 with a two-speed transmission in there, I had to shove it up in there a little bit more to get it to sit flush with these little points right here. When I put them like this, I definitely have like about that much more clearance with this new chassis. And nothing to get hung up on, like these little stubs right here. You know, when you go over some sharp rock, sometimes the rock will hit this and now you're stuck there. Well, this one, nothing. It's all smooth down there. And one more thing I want to point out that I'm not sure most people notice. The shocks, the body the housing, the shock body looks the same. I think the shaft is a little longer on these ones. And the actual springs inside, I'll put a picture up here. It's wound, you know, closer together. So it's a different spring rate. It's a different spring so it is the same shock body it look, looks like it's the same exact shock body the shaft and the spring inside are definitely a different rate because if you look at this one when I compress down on the shock that shaft goes all the way in and it touches the link plastic link now if you look at this one see it does not go all the way in so Ball links everywhere, ball bearings everywhere. There's no bushings in here. Bearings in the transfer case, bearings in the axles. It's it's pretty good. And they put a bigger servo in here, which seems to be pretty powerful. I've yet to replace the stock servos on this. I know people like to replace them and stuff, but I don't really have any issues with them. I just got this truck. I've only done one run with it. And you know me, I'm gonna abuse the crap out of this thing dunk it straight underwater, do a bunch of stuff with it, and I'll let you know how that goes in my future updates with this truck. But for now, this is definitely a buy from me. I'd say get the KM version. I am getting the regular kit version, so I'll have that pretty soon, hopefully, and we'll put them side by side, and I'll let you know what they didn't give you in that kit versus this, this kit, and to let you know if it's still worth it or not, which, you know, if these things are anything to stand by what they do, it's worth it, man. If you like to tinker on these things, you like to modify stuff, you like to cut stuff, you like to modify, you know, throw a whole bunch of mods everywhere, you're gonna like these rigs, any of these. You know, you're gonna you like the military trucks back there. You can have fun with all these, man. A lot of the upgrade parts fit each other. You know, the two-speed is probably gonna fit in this one, too. This one, though, is pretty much upgraded. I don't see anything else. I need to change on this. I really don't. Tires, I've heard of some people not liking how hard they made them nowadays, but tell you the truth, it's not bad, it just depends where you're running. I know for a fact, you know, with the tread pattern on these and everything, that's gonna be tough on, you know, soft stuff like sand and stuff like that, but running on rocks, I don't think you're gonna have any issues with this rig running on rocks. My tires are glued, by the way, you have to glue them, just like the soft tires. They'll come off super easily. Look, I just squish this one, it'll come off. See that, it just came off its bead. So, they, unfortunately that, I. I've seen a couple of people complain about why I need to glue my tires, but if you are really an RC person that has been in the RC world with fast RC trucks and stuff like that, that was the way it's always been done. I mean, you can buy bead locks and stuff, but that's just more expensive. So tire gluing, that's just a normal for me. You know, that 
some people they complain about me it's I do it to all my trips no matter what anyway I don't want to risk having a tire come off on a trail having to keep, keep on putting it back on its beat it's just too much hassle I don't like to deal with hassles I just fix the problem instantly and go out there and have some fun instead of complaining all the time you know well there you go guys it's a sick little truck I do need to tune it a little bit more to get a little bit more suspension smoothness out of it, but I'm pretty sure I'll get there, you know, I just put it together really fast, I didn't measure any of these links or nothing, and I ended up getting a pretty good length on it. For these bodies fitting onto these, I don't know, I don't think it could because of these little tabs right here, but there's a will, there's a way, you know, The I'm pretty sure the regular tray from the older versions will fit on here, then you can probably have one of these trucks sitting on there, honcho style. <laughs> Like I said, these are the kind of cool things you can do, you know, you feel crazy, chop stuff up, make stuff fit. That's what makes these little rigs so fun. I mean, I understand you can buy better stuff out there. Yes, you can buy $500 crawlers, but then again, can you buy that many toys and switch them around and have so much fun? You know, you buy a $500 crawler, you really don't want to sit there and hack that thing up. You know, it's going to hurt your feelings a little bit because you spent so much money on it. But yes, guys, I do recommend this. This is definitely a good one. I like it. Can't wait for my new one to get here. I got a yellow one in the regular kit form with all supposedly all the plastic stuff. And let's see what they do. I want to see what they use for links. We'll see once it once I get it. Because no one has it yet so far. I haven't seen anybody post a video of the regular one. Everyone seems to have this metal version. And I can't blame them. Who doesn't want to get the best one? But we'll see when it gets here. Hopefully it's just as good, and I can recommend that one too for people that like to mod and just do their own stuff and not have to pay the $90 for one of these and just get the $50 one and do your own, you know, homemade mods or aftermarket buy somewhere mods. It's all up to you, man. It's a hobby. You know, this is what we're all into. This is why we do it. Don't let people tell you that you're doing something the wrong way. No, there's no wrong way to do anything. No one has the right way to do it. No one has the better way to do it. Everyone has their own way to do it. That's how I see the RC hobby. So I don't hit on anybody. I see somebody with a different rig fixed up differently than mine. And I think in my head, oh man, I think I did it better. This is my, no, I keep that stuff to myself. Why? There's no need for people to hear that. You know, this is, this is a hobby. Everyone has their fun with it the way they want to have fun with it. They spent their money on these things. They do with it what they want. <laughs> That's how I see it. Well, enough of that. No ranting in this video. This is just a cool video of this thing because I love it. Look, I love it. Oh man, look at this thing. It's heavy too, guys. So let me know what you think. Are you going to grab one of these little kits? Are you going to wait for the. Are you going to grab an RTR version? Are you going to grab the regular version? Put it down there in the comments, you know? So let me know. Does WPL interest you? Does it not interest you? Because it interests me, and I'm a big fan. And I think you should check them out if you've never tried one of them, especially for the scale. If you've never, especially if you've never had a smaller scale vehicle than a one tenth size. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm pointing at right now, but if you've never had a vehicle smaller than that, give this one a try. You know, those small little 124 scale crawlers. Yeah, they're cool. If you're gonna crawl around your pencil and your sharpener and your stuff like that, but this right here, you can actually take out on the trails. Big enough for that. But in this form, not fast enough, unfortunately. We'll see. I might keep this this way. Might get the regular kit and put a two speed in that one. And romp that one around, see what it can do. But for now, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Now go out there and run that RC.